Good morning, church. Good morning. The scripture reading will be taken from Luke chapter 11, verse 1 to 13. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he sees one of his disciples, said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as in earth, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us this day by the day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is in death to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have friend and shall go unto him at midnight? And say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey is come to, is come to me. And I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, Though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his in in opportunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and he shall find you. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Will he give him a servant? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he, will he offer him a scorpion? If he then, being evil, know how to give, Good gifts unto our children. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? This is the word of the Lord. Praise God. We thank the Lord for His word. We can learn to fall in love with Jesus Christ through His word. Amen. Because His principles will never change. We're going to sing about the name of the Lord this morning. The song we're singing. It says, Blessed be the name. I wonder if our multimedia uh, partners could just put the, the words of that song up for us. So we praise God. Hallelujah. One of the great hymns of our faith. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds. Blessed be the name.
this opportunity to welcome you all to our divine service on our Sunday. Special welcome to all our fathers in the house. Welcome to our pastor, all our ministers. Hi, Minister Marina. <laughs> Our first time guests, are you are there any first time guests in our house at this time? So we are all family together. At this time, our praise team is gonna help us sing our welcome song and we're just gonna turn around and smile at everybody. God bless you. Let us greet somebody in Jesus' name. Let us know. Praise God. So let's put into the test. 
test this morning as we do. So the ushers are waiting on us, and I'm going to ask the first team to come, and they're going to sing while we give this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How great is our God. How great is his name. He's a great as one.
His word changes not. This morning, we are more than this. We are more than this. We are His fine creator, great worship. We are a fine selection of His workmanship. You know, this morning, I must say thanks for this opportunity to speak on or to share about the, the joy of fatherhood. You know, most men, and, and before I begin, let me just pause and acknowledge all the fathers in the house. You know, fathers are indeed special among the land. And we want to acknowledge them and say happy Father's Day to all the fathers that are here this morning. And Father's Day is normally synonymous with males, but indeed we are fathers in our days. So to all the women that are indeed fathers, I extend Father's Day to you as well. And I, as I was saying earlier, that most men, they, um, they, they have, most men have a love for cars. Most men follow some discipline of sports. And they will, they will share with you the joy why they love a particular car. And the joy why they are so emotionally connected to a particular team or a particular sport. And they will speak oftentimes to the joy of this car. And oftentimes it's uh, the features, it's the, it's, the, it's the sheer speed or it's the right quality or it's the color, whatever it may be. And the same with sports. The, the, the thrill that one gets from being emotionally um, involved in a game of football and to see that team that you support triumph and supersedes over the other in competition. Those are joys. And when I reflect on the joy of fatherhood, it really, as a father myself, it bestows an immense sense of gratitude sources of this joy. The source is God. He says that children are an heritage. Glory be to God. If I may, that is the ultimate gift, the ultimate calling of any man to be called to fatherhood. And it is God's fine gift. He described it as an heritage, glory be to God. It is fine gift. You know, I was just sharing just yesterday with my wife a uh, message on WhatsApp. And the, the, the message was, ironically, a father giving his, his daughter when she became of age an old car. And he said to her, take this car down to the car mark down the road and ask what's the value. And they returned that the value is a thousand. He said to her, take the car to the pawn shop. And when she went there, they said the value is a hundred dollars. Then he said, take it to the auto club. And when she went to the auto club, they said that is when you behold vintage, yes. when you behold a fine gift. This morning, the value of it. This morning, let us reflect on the value of what God has given to us when he describes children in our lives as an heritage this morning. The second source of joy for me, of fatherhood, is indeed my wife. Right. I really want to acknowledge her. I've said it to her many a times that I appreciate her. I appreciate what she has afforded me. Yeah. But I want to say publicly again, yeah. thank you for allowing me to be a father. Yeah. But it aligns with the scripture in Psalms 128 and I think the third verse. It says, thy wife 
shall be a fruitful vine in thy house. And thy children, glory be to God, they shall be as planted olives around your table. When you examine that scripture, it speaks glory to the fellowship of this divine act of children coming into your life. How your wife plays a critical role. How she is the sustenance of much joy and much happiness and much peace and much contentment. But the fellowship of the children. It, it, the scripture says they come around the table. You picture the joy of children and the fellowship. Which brings me to the third source of my joy. And that is my children. And if I were to reflect on it, a father of a four-year-old and a father of a two-year-old. Yeah. I recount so many joyful memories. Yeah. The joy of childbearing. You know, during that process, yeah. there are many ups and downs. The emotional change yeah. that takes place. But I remember when my wife was about to we were going to take the ultrasound. She said to me if I wanted to know the sex of the child. And I said, this is God's gift. And I really want to be surprised at the time when it beats for us to unwrap this gift. So please, work with me. I don't, I don't want to know. I said to her, work with me. And she committed to working with me. And we would... Uh, That we went away and we shopped and I went outside and I didn't want to see what was being cashed. <laughs> and when you remember when we came back and the customs officer, I beg her, please just allow me to walk away. I didn't want to see what was bought. And I was on a total surprise and I was just trusting God for a safe and a perfect child. That's all that I wanted. You know, but my bubble would burst. I went eight months on a such surprise, only to come home one evening to see the help of busy folding away all sort of pink stuff. My God, I, I, was, I must admit that I was indeed depressed for a week or so. I really didn't want to know. But let me tell you, saints of God, Hallelujah. when it was time for delivery, words cannot express what I saw. When I saw my own seed come forth and cry, I, I, I felt so tear eyed. You know, it is just a joy that I can't explain. explain. Words bid me not to explain that joy. And, you know, when we, when it was time for our second child, this time I wanted to know because the desire of my heart. The true desire of my heart was to have a one child. But I, I, I prayed. I prayed from the minute I know before God's hand started to lay on the parts. I prayed and I said, God, indeed I want a boy child. And I know quite it was the prayer of my wife for us to have a son. So I prayed and I said, God, give us a boy child. I earnestly prayed. And I said, God, give me the desire of my heart. And I didn't only just pray, but I prayed that this boy child would have some tricks. <laughs> would, would look like me in some way, selfishly. Yes, I did pray that prayer. And it was indeed the joy of my heart. When it was time for ultrasound, I, I couldn't contain the kick that I kicked in that tight face when I saw the organ being defined as a male organ. I was so overjoyed, I shouted, I said, yes, me. It sounded like my team manual had scored a goal for those Arsenal fans that were paid me. But it, it, I, I really rejoiced from the depths of my soul. So the joy of, of, of the experience of, 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 of childhood, really I summed it up. It has been so much joy. But when I also look at the joy of their first, my child, my first child, Isabel, 
um, saying that for the first time. My God. An unfair competition to my wife because quietly I would come home and train her <laughs> to say that. I would quietly do that when I come home early. But the joy of seeing her run her first race, the joy of seeing her put together that first Father's Day card, the joys of the first step, the joys of the first Amen. cry, my God, when, when, she, when, when, when she was born, that cry, the anguish. It, 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 it is strange to say, to hear a father say, he enjoyed the cry of his child, but it was her first cry. And very But we, have, we, we truly enjoy some of those first moments. But in coming down, when I also look at the other aspects of joy, it's really the joy of observation. Just observing God's gift, turning back the clock of your life. When you look at your child, you know, yesterday I was here, I was on the road and I got a call that my son stuck a piece of crayon in his nostrils, in one of his nostrils. I rushed home and tried to take it out and it wouldn't come out. And we were on our way to the doctor and in the process he fell asleep and we were able to take it out. But when I saw it, I couldn't, I couldn't allow myself to be angry because it was among the, the sheer, the plethora of mischief that I gave. <laughs> So when I saw that, I just laughed and I just said, there goes I. You know, when my wife sent me a WhatsApp picture of it pushing his head through the grill, I just laughed because I remember doing that. Fortunately for him, his head wasn't stuck, but mine was stuck. For hours, and much oil and butter, they plastered my head to get it home. But when I observe my children, it gives me so much joy. And indeed, it fulfills God's word when he says that children are heritage. But in closing, I want to just encourage the fathers today that oftentimes we see our role as to be that provider, to be that source of firm direction. And we offer, oftentimes find ourselves coming up and I didn't I tell you not to do this. But if you will look on the daily mercies, each day, he daily load us with new mercies. What if God were to say to us, glory be to God, didn't I tell you not to do that? I'm not going to be merciful on you. And sometimes when I come down hard on my kids, as young as they may be, I feel a sense of guilt when I reflect on how good God has been to me. His mercies are endless. And my sins are ever before him. But God has kept me. He has preserved me. So this morning, I encourage the fathers, I encourage the saints of God to cherish our children because indeed they, they symbolize the relationship with us in Christ. God bless you. Amen. 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 Father McCain speaks for all of us as fathers. <laughs>
and she has gotten several degrees under her belt. And I remember when I was speaking to her, we were discussing a particular topic. She was referring to God as the Most High. And I said to her, I said, you keep saying God the Most High. What is his name? You know? And she refused to call his name. And I said to her, I find it difficult to continue with a conversation on spiritual things when we cannot align ourselves on who the name of God is. His name is Jesus. And she said to me, she said, well, I don't want to go into that conversation right now. If you insist to continue on that trajectory and you want to talk about the name, I'm going to hang up the phone. And I said to her, really, you know, what have you become? Because we, 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 we grew up in the apostolic faith and we know that the name of our God is Jesus Christ. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that is a truth that just cannot be removed. No matter what you do, no matter how hard you try. And I said to, she said to me, well, if you believe in the Greek, you are going to believe in Jesus. And I, I pressed her. I said, I want to know who you call God. Is it that he is, that she is, that it? I would love to know who you call God. Well, she didn't like the way it was going, so she ended the call. She hung up the phone. And I remember that night, I was so saddened in my heart. Because I thought to myself, there are so many different winds of doctrine that are blowing these days. And some of them are so insidious. You can readily identify that it is error. We have to ask God to allow the spirit of truth to overcome us so that we can discern right from wrong. And this morning I got up and as I looked on the sheet, I saw the opening song was Blessed Be the Name. This morning I got up and the song that was on my heart was what a beautiful name it is. And I just wonder, perhaps, just before Sister Jackie comes to talk about remembering her dad, perhaps we could just sing that one or two times and let's just really focus on our Jesus and how beautiful his name is. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. Who's given glory and creation. Now we can be
Bless the Lord Jesus, everyone. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord one more time. Indeed, I just want to give honor to the Lord and to say Happy Father's Day to everyone. You know, and I'm just coming up here to say, to reflect on my own earthly father who is no longer with us, you know, for years. I think it's about 20 years that he was killed. But indeed, this week I found myself reflecting on him and growing up. He was a very strict father. The very stern father, but he was a jovial father nonetheless. Because no matter how strict he was, we remember paying more weight. And more weight was he would lie down on his bed on the ground. And then he would yell, more weight. And one of us would spread out. And he said, more weight until all the children were on top until Sue who would tumble over. And that we had help to plot our hair because there were so many females. He think our mother couldn't do it all to get us ready in time for school. So he would plot it, but when he plot your hair, you can't turn your head. Because it was so tight. So when you go to school, you would find yourself just holding your head straight. He would help. He was the disciplinary. When he came home in the evenings, once he reached home, we would all have to line out on our knees and start saying our timetable. And heaven help you if you don't know your timetable. And he would come back to you. We would remember when we have to go back to school, it was washout day. So before you go back to school, you have to take washout. And if you carry it up, you have to drink it back and say, mm hmm so you couldn't carry it up because it had to go down. So we had to get our wash out. And if we don't go to school, whether you're sick or not, once mommy said, Daddy, come. Because you don't go to school, you have to run under the bed. And you stay under the bed till you leave back to work because mommy said, Daddy, come. Because you have to answer why you're not in school. And we couldn't have boyfriends or we couldn't have visitors. Needless to say, we will say no more. <laughs> Amen, Jesus. Amen. But no matter how strict he was, my mother went to the PTA, but he was at every graduation. <laughs> Amen. Growing up, it wasn't just Pentecost where we were like this as naturals. It was actually my father. I grew up, I never recall my father going to church once, apart from for weddings and funerals. But growing up, our mother could not pierce our ears. We could not wear jewelry. We could not process our hair. Because he was that strict. But what I want to tell us that he was a deacon in the church before we were born. He was a bad word cursor when we know him. But yet they're not miss church. So we had to go to church. I had to bargain with him to get my first Chilean jeans. Because we know your pants. But we always went to church. And we have to hide the clothes if we're not going to church. He to dress dirty. And I was excused not to go to church. I recall my father being a hard worker. He was a hard worker. He was a plumber from I know him before he went into construction. And after work, he would go and use a same little car to turn into a taxi. And then he would also raise rabbits and raise chicken. Because in where we live, they never had rabbit and chicken in the backyard, but we had to get chicken and we had to get egg. So I was eating rabbit from I was young. And he would plant cassava and banana. And so we had everything because there were so many of us to feed that we had to grow the food in our backyard. And because he was so hard working, it would always be a pleasure to watch him eating and falling asleep. He didn't let us sleep late. I won't tell you what he said. Who are the only ladies that sleep late so he said, get to go to the bed. <laughs> so at daylight, we had to get up and find something to do in the house because we were not the ladies of the night. So we must get up and find something to do. <laughs> and he would often remind us that if he had a chance, he would have sent us back from where we were coming. If we ever gave trouble. He had some words, and even growing up, we had to become independent early. If you are not going to school, you are on your own. And if you go to him and say, "What help to buy something?" The first question is, "How much you have?" You can't 
come empty. He had Parkinson's horror, but he said, you see the name on it? Parkinson's, not Parkinson's, not company. So it's my money. So if you want my money, come to the hardware hour. Because it's Parkinson's hardware. And so I just want to salute him. We are the way we are, and I am rough and tough, and very independent from friends because we couldn't depend on people as you say, you're coming to me, come with something. You're coming, you have to come with something. How much you have? If you want 100, you must have even 50. And if I have to lend you, all right, tell me how you're going to give me back. And tell me how you're going to work so you don't come back to me. I say, I will, I will borrow 50 and pay back. Tell me the plan. What are you going to work on? Okay, because you're earning, say you're earning, say you're earning. When you don't pay that, there's nothing there. What are you going to do? Where are you going to get it from, all right? You come to the hardware and tell me, pay hardware $1,000 a day that you come. How many days is that? Okay. So you can't know every day? And if really that's enough, say I come holiday. All right, so we can work a plan. Make sure that when I give this, he don't come back. He is a true father. And I just want to give him thanks. And he's no longer here, but we have his inheritance and we have his heritage. God bless you.
And you know something? If you're fearful for going home, COVID not afraid of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And if you're ready, COVID not afraid of you. Oh, glory to God. Amen. And I tell you, Revelation don't trip in yet. My Lord and my God. So if you know what is right, in the morning, Jesus is coming. Yeah. I thank God, Mr. Samaya, that you were baptizing his granddaughter today. Yeah.
as uh, unconcerned creatures, but we approach him saying, Papa, Papa, Abba, Father, Hallelujah. That's the new relationship that we have now entered into with the Creator. It's an intimate relationship. It is a secure relationship. It is a relationship where we have the unconditional love of the Father. Hallelujah. And in this father-son relationship, like all others, there are mutual responsibilities. We as sons and daughters, we have responsibilities. And our Heavenly Father also have responsibility. And our responsibilities as a son, I want to name you a few. Now that we are sons of God, we have some unique responsibilities. One is to uphold the honor of our Father's name. That's why the Lord told the Israelites, do not bear the name of the Lord in vain. In other words, uphold the honor of the family name. Amen. The Queen of England is a beloved lady because of her humility and meekness. Um, she is beloved because of uh, her values and modesty. Amen. And, and a lot of people have felt her pain many a times because her sons many times have brought the English monarchy in disrepute. Amen. And one in particular who have made headlines recently for the wrong reason have kept company with nefarious character and have dragged the monarchy into bad publicity. Amen. Because of the failure to recognize the responsibility Amen. Of upholding the dignity of the name. I want us to know, brothers and sisters, that God is dependent on us. Jesus is dependent on us to uphold the dignity of his name. That his name will not be brought into disrepute. That his name will not be blasphemed against the heathen among the heathen. It is our responsibility as the children of God to recognize that we bear the name of our Father upon us and whatever we do reflects from the Father. Amen. Praise God. You know back in the days Amen. You would walk in the community back in the days and many persons wouldn't know you by your first name. They would say, that's Ellie's son. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. They would say, that's John Boy. That's Mary's girl. Amen. They wouldn't know you by your, amen, give a name, but they know you by your inherited name. Yeah. Amen. And many times you would here is one a John boy do it. You wouldn't even know which one of the boys did it. You would just hear it's one of John boys who did it. Because that name of the father is connected and linked with the son. So we have a responsibility to uphold the honor of the name of Jesus. Whatever we do brings into focus the name of Jesus when we are called Christians. I wonder if somebody want to say amen. amen. And sisters, we must conduct ourselves as royalty. I wonder if anybody want to say amen to that. 
We must conduct ourselves as royalty because we are royal priesthood. And we do not just live for ourselves, but we represent the kingdom of God. Amen. We are representatives of the kingdom of heaven, and we must be true representatives. Amen. The next thing I want us to understand that we as children of God have a responsibility to build the Father's business. Amen. You know, many children, they come into a family that is involved in some particular discipline. And uh, one of the expectations of the father is that uh, there will be someone in the family or everyone in the family will help uh, to build that discipline. Amen. Good footballers want their children Amen. To learn the sport and to become great footballers. Good musicians want their children to be, amen, musically inclined and to, amen, take their heritage and legacy. Good businessmen and businesswomen, they, amen, wants uh, their children to be a part of the heritage. Amen. And I saw Jesus as he walked into the synagogue and begin to, amen, interact with the lawyers and doctors. When his mother found in me, told his mama, I must be about my father's business. Amen. He says, I've got, to, I've got to be about my father's business. It's not just about my will, but it's about the will of my father. I'm going to be building the kingdom of my father. I'm not going to tear it down. I'm going to build it up. Amen. I'm going to look out for its interests. I'm going to see if anybody's undermining that business. I'm going to call them out. I wonder if somebody's understanding what I'm saying. I say if anybody's undermining my father's business, I'm going to call them out. Amen. Because I have that business at heart. I'm a part of it. Amen. And we have got to preserve. Amen. And treasure the legacy of our father. That's why Nabal would not sell. Amen. His vineyard that was close to Ahab's house. When Ahab offered him a whole lot of money. For that plot of land, he says, this is not for sale because I got it from my papa. Amen. And my papa worked hard for it. He says, you could give me a million dollars. It is not valued. Amen. The amount of value I place on this because of what it represents. Somebody lift their hands and worship the name of the Lord. Yes, brothers and sisters, I want somebody to understand that we have an interest in the kingdom of God. We have a partnership in the kingdom of God. We have a role in the kingdom of God. Our father's business has now become a part of our interests and we should put our everything in to ensure that the kingdom of God is established upon the earth and that the kingdom of God will triumph in all its endeavor. Amen. We are not going to be those that tear down the business of our father. We are going to be about our father's business. We are going to carry on the work of preaching the gospel. We are going to heal the sick. We are going to deliver them that are bound. Because we have received the spirit of sonship. That gives us the legal right to participate in the activities of the kingdom. Oh somebody praise God. When you see a trespasser 
I'm the property of your daddy. You have all right to say to that trespasser, get off of my father's property. You have the authority to say your father and to come on demons and devils in the name of your father because you have a part interest in your father's kingdom. I say if you see your demons around the territory of your father, get that trespasser off. Amen. If you see amen, lions and deers coming to take over the territory of your father, you need to rise up and drive them out of the domain of your father's kingdom. Somebody say amen. 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 He said I must be about my father's business. He said it's not just about my will. He says not my will but thy will be done Lord. Hallelujah. Oh yes. As we look to the father Amen. We understand that he is also looking to us. As we depend on the Father, I want us to understand that God is always depending on us to take care of his business. Amen. As he takes care of us, he wants us to take care of his own. Amen. He wants us to preserve the honor and the value of the things concerning him. Amen. And finally, as we must honor the virtues of our Father. Amen. And Bible says that the children should rise up and call our parents blessed. Say, honor your father and your mother, for this is right. For this is a first commandment with promise. Yes, it is our duty and responsibility as children of God to give honor to God. So he taught us to pray. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Amen. Hallowed be thy name. Yes, as children of God, we are called to show forth the praises of him. To lift up our Father on high. Amen. Somebody strangers can't tell. Amen. About my Father like I can. Amen. Sister Jackie, nobody would have known those things about your daddy. But you have. So you got to tell it. If you didn't tell it, we wouldn't know it. So brothers and sisters, we have got to lift up Jesus, our heavenly father. We have got to declare his name among the Eden and the glory of his name. We have got to praise God. Amen. In the face of every devil and every atheist and every skeptic, we should not be afraid to declare that God is our father. Jesus is our father. And we are the children of the most high God. And declare that he is Good. And his mercies endure it forever. Even when we are suffering and people are questioning, amen, the integrity of our Father. Tell them to get out of our, our family business. And then let them know, leave the family business alone. Leave me and my father to work it out. Job told his friends, Job told his friends, you just keep out of this. Amen. This is about me and my father. Amen. And if we have a problem, we we'll work it out. But you keep out. Amen. And don't you question the goodness of my father because you see I'm suffering. Don't question the faithfulness of my father because you see me. Amen. In an old car. Don't question the goodness of my father because I don't have enough money. Amen. Like you do. Amen. Oh, somebody knows you got to lift up your father. Amen. I want somebody to understand that God also as our father he has responsibilities. 
and he will not relieve on those responsibilities. We can trust him that he is going to be a father that guides. We can trust him that he is going to be a father that provides. We can trust him that he is going to be a father that protects. Yes, brothers and sisters, I want you to know, hallelujah, that God knows how to care for his children. He won't deceive us. He won't harm us. He is faithful, loving, and compassionate. He operates with our eternal interest at heart. God operates on a long-sighted approach to our dealings. So sometimes we will go through short-term discomfort because he's working for our eternal comfort. Sometimes we will go through seasons of suffering because he's preparing us for an eternity of joy. Ah, uh, yes, brothers and sisters, I want us even when we are going through the valley of the shadow of death, do not doubt or question the integrity of God to take care of us. Do not doubt the loving kindness of God. He will bring us through the valley sometimes, but he's not bringing us there to destroy us or to tempt us. He's just bringing us there to prepare us and process us for eternity. God knows how to take care of his children. Lift your hands and say amen. amen. Yes, that's why the psalmist could say the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, and wherever I am, I'm going to trust him. Whatever I'm going through, I am going to trust him, because I know that the loving kindness of God never sees the compassion of God they fail not and even when you feel the pain so deep I want you to know that God is still a good God and he's still working for your eternal security he's working for your eternal salvation and sometimes he has to put us to the fire of suffering to preserve us for eternal joy so ah uh, David says why are you cast down O oh my soul and why art thou disquieted within me hope thou in God for he will cause the rock to be upon you for a while but it is working towards a far greater good for the sufferings of this present world is not worthy to be compared with the joy that shall be revealed in us. So when we are suffering, we suffer with hope. So the Bible said be steadfast. Movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor will not be in vain, because all the sufferings of this present time is working out an eternal glory that will preserve our eternal soul. Somebody lift their hands and worship Him. We can trust our Father. Amen. Hallelujah. David said his rod and his staff, they comfort me. Amen. He says, even through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And sometimes it's going to be the rod, but I know, God, you're working it out for my own good. Sometimes it will be the staff, but it's still for my good. Amen. 
God is faithful. Amen. Amen. I want to speak to those who are going through difficult times at this moment. Amen. And maybe your needs are many and your money is few. But I want you to know that God promises to provide for his children. Amen. As Brother McKay says, consider the lilies as Jesus brought the disciples to attention to the lilies. He brought their attention to the sparrow. And he says the sparrow don't eat because of his own genius. But he eats because I feed him. He said the lily is pretty because I clothe him. And these are just inanimate, soulless life form. How much more valuable are you? He says, be not dismayed. Somebody said, what well, every time God will take care of you. I want you to know the only time the responsibility of provision ceases for a father is when a child is no longer part of the household. That's the only possibility of provision ceases. As long as that child is in the, amen, the household, that responsibility remains dad. Amen. Three of my children are no longer in my household. I have no responsibility for them. They have to find their own way. Hallelujah. So they have to find their own way. They are not a part of the household. But as long as they are part of the household, amen. I can't cook dinner and don't leave dinner for them. Oh my God. I wonder if you're hearing me. Uh, I said as long as they are part of the household, I, I, I can't prepare a meal, amen. And just have me and my wife eat and leave the pot empty and dry. No, that's not the heart of a father. And I want you to know, if you stay a part of God's household, God has to take care of you. If you leave the household, he has no more responsibility for you. And that's what the prodigal boy did. He said, Daddy, I don't want to be a part of your household any longer. Just give me what you have to give me, and I will go and take care of myself. Amen. Say, but that I don't want you taking care of me anymore. Just give me what you have for me, and I'll be responsible for myself. Amen. And he went out of his father's house and made a mess of his life. I don't mind telling you that I know I can't take care of myself. And I don't know how skilled you are. I don't know how good you are. I don't know, hey man, how talented you are. But I know that I can't take care of myself. I've messed it. I've done foolishness with my life so many times. I've made crazy decisions so many times that I've come to understand that I don't have the skill. I don't have enough wisdom. I don't have enough foresight and I don't have enough amen view to look around the corner to make all the decisions I need to make. That's why I'm going to stay in his household. I'm going to go and say daddy you're a papa. I'm my father, you are responsible for me. Here I am, Lord. If I'm doing something wrong, you need to straighten me out, Lord. Amen. But lead me not in the temptation and deliver me from evil, Lord. And provide me day by day. Give me day by day my daily bread because I said, Our oh, Father, which heart in heaven, give God a praise in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He taught his disciples to pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Keep us away from the devil's snares, from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Amen. Lead us not in the 
heart of the adversary that he has set us for, lead us away from temptation and deliver us from evil because evil is all around in the sinful world. Well, daddy, daddy, I'm depending on you. When I'm walking too close to the edge, you use your staff and just tap me and get me back over in the safe zone. When I'm wandering, oh Lord, near to the cliff you take your staff and you hook me back Lord Lord lead me not into temptation and deliver me from evil I wonder if somebody knows that you need that guidance because we are limited and the variables are so many and our view is so limited that we need a father to watch over us because sometimes we don't even know the danger we you know we don't know the dangers that are lurking around and it takes an insightful eye of a father amen to say son leave that alone somebody praise God thine is the kingdom Lord the power and the glory forever and ever so as we celebrate Father's Day today may we recognize and all that we would expect from a good earthly father, we can expect from God and expect a hundred times more. Because he's not just an earthly father, he's a heavenly father. Sometimes our earthly father lacks the capacity. As much as they have the will, they lacks the capacity. And sometimes there are even some fathers that have the capacity, but they lack the will to perform their duty. But thank God, we can go and say, Abba, Father. We can come boldly to the throne of grace. Because we are not coming as strangers. We are not coming as creatures of God. We are coming as sons of God. And beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But one these days when he appear, we shall be like him. For we are going to see him as he is. And we are going to see. Oh my God, how much we resemble him through the spirit that he has given us. Oh, stand with me, somebody, and worship the Father which is in heaven. Give him a praise right now all over this place. Our Father, our Father, our Father. I want if somebody want to cry out, Haba, 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 Haba. If you're feeling the pain and it's feeling so severe, cry out, Abba, 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 Abba. Hallelujah. If you came there with a need right now, and there's something pressing that you need in your life, I wonder if you want to stretch your hands to your father right now. And say, God, I'm still in your household. I'm still a part of your household. I'm still a part of your household. I'm still a part of your household. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, you're not just my God. You're my father. You're my father. You're my father. Father, you're my father. I want you to show up for me, Lord. If you have a need in the house today, in the name of Jesus, your father is he's no father than a breath away. He's no father than a breath away. Your father is right here. He's listening. He's listening. Yes, though you can see him, he's right there. He said, no one can pluck you out of my hands. I want there's somebody want to reach out to God right now. In the name of Jesus, I want you to reach out to God right now and give him praise in the house, whatever your situation is. I want you to approach your father right now and just stretch your hand and say, Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba Father. Oh, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead and sing that song as we worship God. Church, reach out to God right now. It's reach out time. Hallelujah. Yes, there's something. God has something for his children this morning. I wonder if you want it, you can take it.
the house, Father Jesus. Show up right now. Show up right now. Show up right now, Lord.
Father, lift up in the atmosphere right now in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, Lord, yes, Lord, you're our Lord.
this year did a great thing. But I want to express myself that no greater joy to me than to see a soul surrender to the Lord. And it's a privilege for me to be baptizing a grandchild first that I will baptize as a grandchild. Hallelujah. And I am looking out to the Lord to fill her with the spirit that she can face. She will not want the Lord to come. Find her and And I know that the Lord honor the good desire of our hearts. Hallelujah. So I'm going to perform this thought. Just this line on upon the profession of your faith and the obedience to the word of the Lord. Baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins, you shall receive the gift of the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved, beloved, now we are the sons of God.
and this begins at 11 a.m. through to 1 p.m. On Tuesday evening at 8 p.m., we have a Zoom meeting, and this will be hosted by the Discipleship Ministry. On Thursday will be our Bible study, and that will be on Facebook Live with our pastor at 8 p.m. On Friday evening, via Zoom, will be youth service. And on Saturday evening, will be family devotions in our homes. Upcoming events on Tuesday, June 30, at 8 p.m., the Whole Life Ministry will be hosting a very special Zoom session. That will be at 8 p.m. and with a special invited guest is Dr. Sean Ferguson. To remember to pray one for the other as we go forth and await his coming. God bless you. These are the announcements. Amen. The Lord bless you. Be gracious unto you. Lift up his confidence upon you and give peace. In Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you.